Um, and we just, like we just saw in the reflection from the homework, uh, there are often many ways to solve an equation. Um, one way that I'd like to highlight is the onion method because it works with all different functions, um, like squares and like squares and stuff like that. But and we think about it like we're peeling away the outermost function of a problem. And sometimes it'll save steps and keep the number small. But uh, it especially works when, when there is only one x and it's just buried. So for example here, we only have one x and it's buried. And we can just peel away all these outer layers, right, until we uncover that x. But in this problem, uh, we do not want to do the onion method because we have this other x over here and things are going to get ugly because we're going to end up, if we take the square root of this, then we're going to end up with with uh, like 5x, the square root of 5x, and then that doesn't really help us get anywhere because we're burying this x. So it only works when there's only one, it especially works well when there's only one x. So here's an example where either way is probably just as good as the other way. So uh, the classic distribute and simplify, we would distribute this to both parts and get 3 fourths x plus 7, or plus uh, 21 over 4, plus 5 equals 11, right? And then uh, let's see what we're going to do. Let's subtract the 5 over here, and we get 3 fourths x equals 6. Oops, I forgot something. Um, 3 fourths x plus 21 fourths equals 6. Uh, then maybe I would subtract the 21 fourths. Uh, let's see, 26 is 24 fourths minus 21 fourths equals uh, 3 fourths. And then 3 fourths x equals 3 fourths. So I'm going to multiply by 4 thirds on both sides, 4 thirds and I'm gonna get one, x equals one. That was fine, you know, fun with fractions and all that, always a good thing. But now let's think about the onion method. Um, so my x is buried here, right? And um, my outermost function right now is this plus five. And it's often kind of reverse order of operations, right? So subtraction, addition, we're gonna do that. We're gonna peel those layers first. So I'm gonna subtract five first. and then I get six. Now my outermost function is this uh, three-fourths, so is multiplying by three-fourths. So the opposite of that is dividing by three-fourths, which you do that by multiplying by the reciprocal. And so then I get x plus seven on this side because these reduce out. And I get, um, 24 thirds, which equals 8. So now I have x plus 7 equals 8. Then I'm going to subtract 7, and I'm going to get x equals 1. Now, um, there's similar numbers of steps in both of these methods, and they and <coughs> but one thing that's kind of nice is I didn't have to add fractions over here. Um, but so that's the onion method. One of the tricky parts of the onion method is knowing what, which is the outermost function, right? And if I'm not sure, I will plug in a value for x, into x, like 1. And I would add 7, then I would multiply, and then I would add this 5. And whatever that last function is, that last operation, I'm going to get rid of that and do the opposite of that. So let's look at this one here. Um, so I have this thing the squared, x squared buried in here, right? There's only one x. So this is my outermost function, is this plus one, right? And I know that because it's gonna be reverse order of operations. So first I'm gonna add one. And I'm gonna get three x squared equals 75. Now my next order of operations is this times three, right? Because if I plugged a one in, I'd get one squared is one, times three is, is whatever. So I'm gonna divide by three and then I get x squared equals 25. Now I'm going to take my square root. And as we know, when we take a, ever we take a square root, we have to take into account the positive and negative answers. So that way we peeled away all those layers and now we have our answer. Now sometimes uh, things get 
we get things especially buried, right? So as I look at this, my outermost function is this times three halves, right? So I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal, two thirds, right? And uh, which is uh, 24 over three, which is eight once again. I'm not very creative some days, am I? X minus one squared equals eight. Now, uh, now I can take my square root, square root of eight. Now, this is one of those instances where we don't know what the perfect square of eight is. And so probably it's best to think about splitting this into two equations where we have X minus one equals the square root of eight and X minus one equals the negative square root of eight, right? Because we always have those positive and negative options, okay? Then my last step is going to be to add one to both sides. And I'm going to get one plus the square root of eight and one minus the square root of eight. Now, here's a little review for you guys. Um, that answer is not, though it's an acceptable answer, right? It's not the best answer. We want to simplify any radicals, right? And we know that the square root that um, that we can divide this up into parts where I have a perfect square times whatever's left over because four times two is eight, right? And then I know that the square root of four is two and I get two root two. Another way to think about this, the square root of eight, if I do prime factorization of this number, then I get two times four and two times two, right? And then I can, anytime there's a pair uh, like that, I can say, oh, well, the square root of anything times itself, the square root of two squared is just gonna be two. And so this is gonna be two root two. So the better answers in this instance are one plus two root two and one minus two root two. There's a video that helps lay out this stuff a little bit more um, and we'll practice some more here in a second. Let's look at this problem here. Um, uh, my outermost function right now, because division is a grouping symbol, right? My outermost function right now is this division by four. So the opposite of dividing by four is multiplying by four. And then I'm gonna get 20 equals two X minus five. Now my outermost function is this plus five. So I'm gonna add five to both sides. And I'm gonna get 25 equals two X. And then I can divide by two and I get 25 over two equals X. Great answer. Okay. Let's look at this next one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the UEs. Okay. Um, my outermost function here is subtracting five. And I get 60. Then I'm gonna divide by five. And I get X squared equals uh, 12 and then I can take my square root and um, the square root of 12 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 so it's going to be 2 root 3 so I can say x equals plus and minus 2 root 3 all right so that's kind of a, a brief thing about the onion method where you're just kind of peeling away the layers. And the key thing to remember is it works really well when there's only one X and it's buried down deep and you just have to peel away those layers. Now, let's do, so as we talk, so now we're gonna talk about um, some a, a method for solving quadratics when there is an X squared and an X term. But let's talk just a second about some background. Now we know, just like we talked about, right? Uh, here's some things that we know. 36, um, the square root of 36 equals uh, the square root of six squared because 36 is six squared and which equals six. Another way to think about that that's pretty cool and kind of is this idea that 36 equals four times nine. In other words, 49 are factors. That's an important point. Factors of 36. 
I can break this up into square root of 4 times the square root of 9, which is 2 times 3, which is 6. So this is true. This kind of proves that form, that postulate that anything that that the square the square root of a product is the same thing as the square roots is the mul multiplication of the square roots of its factors. Now let's check this out. Now we know that 9 plus 16 equals 25 and the square root of 25 is 5. But it does is not true because these are 9 times 16 are not factors of 25, right? So the square root of 9 plus the square root of 16 does not equal, is not accurate, right? Does not work. So because of order of operations, when, whenever we're faced with this, right, this is not a perfect square. Not a perfect square. We cannot do this. Okay, but we can do this, right? We can say this is the square root of 4 times the square root of x squared, which is 2. The square root of anything squared is x. We can do this, right? But we cannot do this. Nope, bad. Okay, but let's think about this for a second. If we rewrite this as a perfect square, right, we know that uh, the square root of 9 is 3 and half and 3 plus 3 is 6 so we could rewrite this as x plus 3 squared right and the square root of anything squared is just that thing so all of a sudden this idea of completing the square becomes pretty darn powerful when we can turn things that look pretty ugly like that into something that's pretty simple like that so let's use this in a couple of problems so the steps are, one, I'm going to isolate my variable terms. So this one, my variable terms are on one side, my, my numbers are on the other, okay? Then I'm going to, now we all know that I can, as long as I add something to both sides, that the same thing to both sides, these two things are equivalent, right? And um, in this case, right, I'm going to I'm going to add something here that makes this a perfect square, and I'm going to add the same thing to both sides of the equation. And uh, six divided by two is three, and three squared equals nine. So I'm going to add nine to both sides. That way, this becomes a perfect square trinomial, right? And I get and I can rewrite this as, as a square of a binomial, x plus 3 squared, right? We know that that's true. And then I get equal 16. 7 plus 9 is 16. So now I can start peeling away those layers. I'm back at that onion method. I can take a square root, and I'm going to get x plus 3 equals 4, and x plus 3 equals negative 4. Now I can subtract 3, and I'm going to get x equals 1. And x, and I'm going to subtract 3, and I'm going to get x equals negative 7. Now it's important when we take that square root to divide it into two equations like this, because these answers aren't going to be plus and minus the same thing. Here's another one. So my first step is to isolate the variable terms. So I'm going to say x squared minus 8x equals negative 4. Now, uh, negative 8 divided by 2 equals negative 4, and negative 4 squared equals 16. So I'm going to add 16 to both sides. Now, uh, so now I have a perfect square trinomial uh, here, and I can rewrite that as a square of a binomial, x minus 4 squared. Uh, and that equals negative 4 plus 12 is, plus 16 is 12. And now I can take my square root. And I get x minus 4. Uh, and we know that the square root of 12 uh, is 2 root 3. So x minus 4 equals 2 root 3. And x minus 4 equals negative 2 root 3. So x equals 4 minus 2 root 3 and x equals 4 plus 2 root 3. Two wonderful answers. Okay, two more examples. So first step is always to isolate the variable terms. Okay, so I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move the numbers over here and I'm gonna move the variables over here because I always want my 
you always want your x squared to be positive 1. So I'm going to subtract 7, and I'm going to get 3 minus 4x equals x squared. I'm going to add 4x. 3 equals x squared plus 4x. Okay. Now uh, to make this a perfect square, I'm going to add. I'm going to half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. I'm going to add 4 to both sides, and I get 7 equals. Uh, then I rewrite this as a square of a binomial, x plus 2 squared. Take my square root, root 7 equals x plus 2. Or, sorry, I don't need those parentheses anymore. Oh, uh, Square root, so then I get uh, 7 equals x plus 2, root 7 equals x plus 2, and negative uh, and we'll say we'll call it positive and negative and then I subtract 2 and I get negative 2 plus and minus root 7 equals x. It's kind of running out of space there. Let's do one last problem. So first step, isolate the variable terms. Half of 12 uh, 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 squared equals 36. So I'm going to add 36 to both sides. And I'm going to get, and so now I have my perfect square over here. And I'm going to go x plus 6 squared equals 32. Take my square root. And, um,. <coughs> I know that uh, 32 is, is uh, 16 times 2, so that's going to be 4 root 2, um, plus and minus 4 root 2, so x plus 6 equals positive and negative 4 root 2, so x equals negative 6 plus and minus 4 root 2. All right. So those are your examples. There's also some questions in uh, Alex. Um, have fun.